Hey there guys, Paul here. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through some examples for the selection of an evaporator valve station for your industrial refrigeration application. Coming up, defining the evaporator valve station conditions, customizing an evaporator valve station, generating a report, and generating a bill of materials. This video is part of a series where we'll be looking at a number of worked examples using the Cool Selector 2 application to help you select and calculate components for your refrigeration system. So do check out the other videos if you haven't already, links are in the video description below. We start the evaporator valve station selection process by clicking on the industrial applications tab and then selecting the evaporator valve station category. A new pop-up window will then appear displaying the system schematic in the center with additional options around the left and top side. First, above the schematic, we have the option to use straightway or angle wave valves. Then we can choose the connection type. On the left side of the schematic, we can choose whether we require valve components to be integrated into an ICF valve station, or if we want each to be an individual component. We have this option for the wet return line, defrost drain line, liquid feed line, and hot gas defrost line. You can see the schematic will update depending on which option we select. Lastly, we have the option to include or exclude a check valve within the hot gas line before the evaporator. If we then click the next button, a new page will load asking us to define the distance the valve station will be installed above the evaporator. We enter our details and then click next. A new window will then load asking us to define the operating conditions. First, we need to choose the refrigerant we'll be using. In this example, we'll select R717 ammonia. We can then input a pressure drop for the control valve in the liquid feed line. Next, we need to define the capacity. For this example, we will require a cooling capacity of 80 kilowatts. We can choose other capacity options from the drop down menu. Notice the mass flow rate and the heating capacity values will change as we make a change to the cooling capacity. Now we enter our evaporator conditions. For this example, we will use temperature as our input and then use our evaporator temperature of negative 40 degrees Celsius. Again, notice this changes our mass flow rate and heating capacity values. We also have the option to enter any superheat here too. Now we move on to the condenser conditions. For this example, we will select temperature as our input and then enter our condenser temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. We then have the option to enter our subcooling here too. In the additional section, we can define the circulation rate, the pump pressure difference, as well as a discharge temperature if required. This would otherwise be calculated using the default isentropic efficiency. Below this, we can then define our hot gas defrost conditions such as capacity factor, supply temperature, as well as the dew point or pressure, and the defrost temperature dew point or pressure. Once you're satisfied with your inputs, we can continue to the selection stage. Based on the conditions entered, Cool Selector 2 will then recommend an ICF station. But if this is not possible, it will automatically select and suggest individual components. This is shown on the screen for each line along with the valve symbols and total pressure drop for each. Where an ICF selection was possible, an ICF icon will display along with a section of pipe. If you selected individual components or the software automatically selected individual components because no ICF solution was able to meet the criteria, then each item in the line will be displayed individually. Additionally, you will notice the software includes vertical sections of pipe as well which is required for the pressure drop calculations. If we click on an ICF icon, a pop-up will show each of the components it contains as well as some relevant performance data. We can export this information by right-clicking on the chart data and selecting Export to Excel. At the top of the pop-up, we can also find the product code number. If we click on the icon of an individual component, we can also display the relevant performance data in a pop-up. At the bottom of the window, we again have a schematic, although this will update to show the product suggested. On the right, we can also view the operating conditions which we defined earlier. You can edit these if needed. At the top of the screen, we have the option to select code numbers. If we click this, we are presented with a pop-up showing the available options. We can change our selection to obtain the correct code number by selecting the product from the list. A blue box will highlight the icon of the current product we're defining. You can move the pop-up to view this if it's covered. If you're satisfied with your selection, you can generate a bill of materials by selecting the buttons in the top menu bar. We'll look at this towards the end of the video. If you are not yet satisfied with your selection and need to further edit this, you can click the Edit Selections button. We're then presented with a pop-up 
asking to proceed via the wizard or for a manual process. Choosing the wizard will take us back through the selection process we just followed. This will keep the values you previously selected. If you make a change to these values, then it will update the results at the end. If we choose manual selection, then we can customize each component. As it is custom, we will not be able to return back to the wizard overview. By clicking the manual selection button, we are presented with the evaporator valve station customization screen. Along the top of the screen, we can change between each of the lines within the valve station. Within each line tab, we can then define the refrigerant and connection type on the left, as well as the operating conditions on the right. Below the operating conditions, we have the list of components as well as the operating conditions. If we double click on the icons, we have some additional customization options. For example, if we click on the ICF icon, we can customize each module by selecting the customize ICF radio button. We can then use the drop down options for each module, as well as changing the housing, module numbers and connections. We cover ICF selection and customization in much greater detail in our separate ICF video. Do check that out, links are in the video description down below. If we close that pop up and come back to the line drawing, we can add additional components to the line by selecting the product from the left, then selecting the product family and clicking and dragging this to the desired location on the line. For example, we can add a section of pipe to calculate the pressure drop. If you need to remove a component, just click on the X above the product icon. Each of the lines will show a performance segment at the bottom of the screen. You can click and drag the bar to make this bigger if required. This section displays interactive graphs which can be exported using the save icon in the bottom right corner. There will also be a tab for performance details where you can see the thermodynamic data. Some lines will also have a code number selection tab. You must select a product here for each component in order to display it in the bill of materials. Once you're satisfied with your selection, you can generate a bill of materials or report by clicking the buttons in the top menu bar. If we click on the report button, then a default report will display showing our selections. We can add additional information to the project information segment using the inputs on the left hand panel and clicking update. Additionally, we can add or remove information from the report by clicking the expand button within items to include in the report and then selecting or unselecting the options. To display these changes, simply click the update button. Once complete, this can be printed, saved as a PDF or exported to various mediums using the buttons above the report. If we click on the bill of materials button in the top menu, you can generate a bill of materials showing the code numbers for our required products. If you notice there are blank cells for some of your code numbers, then you will need to go back to define the product. To do this, simply click on the selections tab at the top. You can come back to the bill of materials after completing. Within the bill of materials, we have the option to enter a project name, some comments, and our own name to the report using the left hand panel. If you enter information here, just click the update button to add this to the report. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. We hope this has helped you. If so, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you have any questions at all, let us know in the comment section down below. You can also find links to more Cool Selector 2 tutorials in the video description. Do check those out. Once again, thanks for watching.